All right, well, we'll get started. So welcome again. Uh, my name is Matthew Artizone. I'm the Associate Dean of Admissions and Enrollment at the Eastman School of Music. And it's a real pleasure for me to be here tonight with Eastman's Director of the Institute for Music Leadership and Associate Professor of Music Leadership, Rachel Roberts. And I'm gonna introduce Rachel more formally um, in a moment, but I uh, just wanna review for those of you just logging in some quick pointers. Um, please do introduce yourself in the chat uh, if you're just joining us. And we will disable the chat eventually and switch to the Q&A for the uh, question and answer format. Um, as we go, we'll be, we'll be moving through uh, some slides here and topics around both the degree, the Master of Arts in Music Leadership, and also the course offerings through the Arts Leadership Program, and, uh, and lots of, <laughs> lots of uh, other things related to those. Um, and then at the end, we will, we will catch up on any questions that we haven't gotten to uh, at that point. So right now I'm going to, whoops, I went, I went one too fast. I'm going to uh, introduce Rachel a little bit more fully. Um, as an Eastman alum, Rachel has received her Bachelor of Music and Flute Performance while also earning the Arts Leadership Certificate through Eastman's Institute for Music Leadership. The Institute opened in the late 90s and ever since then has had an evolving set of offerings related to entrepreneurship, arts leadership, career counseling, um, and, and lots besides that that uh, Rachel will cover. She's had a remarkable career in arts leadership with positions at the Atlantic Symphony Orchestra and the New England Conservatory, where she spearheaded the creation of the Entrepreneurial and Musicianship Department. And we consider ourselves very fortunate to have had her join us uh, or I should say rejoin us uh, in 2018 to be the lead faculty member and uh, graduate degree programs director for Eastman's Institute for Music Leadership and for the new Master of Arts in Music Leadership. So welcome to you, Rachel. Thanks, and, Matthew. Uh, it's great to be here. Yeah, and then I'm going to turn it over to, uh, to you very shortly. I just want to give folks just a very brief overview of graduate studies at Eastman in general. Um, so just some, some very high level information about the school. We are located in Rochester, New York. This is in Western uh, New York State, just south of Lake Ontario, a little bit north of what we call the Finger Lakes region. It's really uh, sort of the wine country of, of New York State. Uh, if you ever had a New York State wine, that's, that's probably where it came from. And uh, so it's a small but thriving city, in, which is kind of surrounded by, you know, beautiful um, nature. Uh, if you drive 30 minutes in any direction, you're kind of uh, in, in some beautiful countryside. Um, at Eastman, there are about 500 or so undergraduate students and another roughly 300 graduate students that are enrolled. Eastman is, of course, one of several schools at the University of Rochester. We are the professional music school for the university. We're located on a se separate campus in downtown Rochester in the sort of cultural arts district of the city, uh, with the rest of the university being located on either what we call the River Campus, a more sort of campusy campus of green spaces and brick buildings, um, as well as the medical complex that is the university medical center. Students at Eastman pursue a number of different uh, programs, degrees and majors. Uh, in the graduate school, we are offering degrees uh, at both the master's and doctoral levels, ranging from performance in both jazz and classical uh, into composition, music education, music theory, musicology, and film scoring, and of course now also in, in music leadership. And um, I'll just close by saying that Eastman is a place where artistry and scholarship truly intersect and these disciplines inform each other uh, in ways that uh, we'll be happy to speak of more um, perhaps during the Q&A. But as an Eastman alum myself, a uh, graduate of uh, the classical guitar program with a, a DMA, um, which I'll say I earned in 1997, just before the creation of the Institute for Music Leadership, I just missed it. Um, one of the one of my 
favorite things to talk about uh, when people ask me what's special about Eastman is that intersection of the sort of intuitive musical artistic side and the intellectual uh, research side. Um, so with that, I am now going to turn it over to Professor Roberts to talk more about uh, what, what we're going to touch on today. Thanks, Matthew. It's great to share this information with you. As an alum, I never expected that I'd be back at Eastman, and it's such a joy to be back in Rochester to be working at Eastman. It really is a very special place that is a community of learners, fosters all kinds of artistic excellence, and is very welcoming of this new degree program as well. Today, or this evening rather, <clears throat> I thought I'd share a little bit about the MA in Music Leadership, talking about this online degree experience. It's the first degree offered 100% online at the University of Rochester, and we are proud to spearhead that at Eastman. There's a few other important uh, opportunities with that online degree that I'd like to talk about. And then zoom out a little bit and talk about the Institute for Music Leadership and the Arts Leadership Program in general as well, regardless of the degree and the major that you may be interested in. Um, that information, I hope, is relevant to everyone. And then we'll have time for your questions as well. And if something isn't covered in this session today, please don't hesitate to connect and email me or my colleagues in admissions, either Matthew or Christina, and we would be more than happy to chat with you and answer your questions after the session is over. So to begin, Matthew, if you want to switch to the next slide, the MA in Music Leadership is our first fully online degree. It's kind of like an executive leadership uh, program focused specifically for music administration and music leadership. It's a 14-month degree when pursued full-time, so it would be an intensive study in the summer, a full academic year, and a second summer. There is also a part-time option available. I have many students in this cohort, if, over the past number of cohorts that we've had, actually, who pursue this degree while working full time. So that is possible to take one or two courses based on your own schedule and what's possible for you and to complete this degree over the course of two or three or four years. Um, the coursework, what's embedded in that 14 months is that there are 10 required music leadership courses. Um, you also have five credits of Eastman electives. All of the classes, whether they are required courses or the electives, are based in experiential learning. All of the faculty members have taken classes on how to design online courses effectively and matched that with their own personal experience of what leadership is required in professional arts um, positions of today. And so we've taken that information and structured not just the academic study of the courses, but the assignments and the doing, very much based in the experiential learning component. The final piece of the degree is a capstone experience. So if pursuing this full-time, this would be your second summer. The capstone is really the culmination of the entire course of study for this degree. These are individually designed based on a student's own interest and where they would want to explore more or perhaps where they would want to see their career moving forward. Over the last couple years, we have had students um, I've helped facilitate students being placed with organizations such as Mass Mocha, Street Symphony, Aspen Music Festival and School, uh, Interlochen Music Festival and School, Kent Blossom in the Cleveland Orchestra. So a wide range of places where students have wanted to go and we've been able to facilitate that experience 
uh, designed very individually. And that's one of the joys of this program is that the cohort will remain um, manageable and small enough that we are able to have that type of individualized attention for every student based on their own learning goals and learning objectives. So this next slide uh, goes a bit further into detail with all of the classes that are offered in this degree. Um, I teach three of the classes, one in the summer, music administration and governance, one in the fall, the designing creative initiatives, that's a practicum course, and then one in the spring, the creative and innovative leadership. Jim Dozer, my predecessor, um, even though he's retired, he still is teaching in our program, which I'm very appreciative of. He teaches uh, leadership issues and music course. It's a half semester, and he typically invites in a half dozen different leaders to share their perspectives for students to interview, and then to distill the leadership con um, concepts and commonalities between all of those individuals. Ari Solitoff is the next one on the screen moving down. He teaches our law and music course. Ari is an oboist. He had a fantastic career in orchestra administration, running some orchestras, and then switched to music and performance law. Um, he's based out of Portland, Maine, but teaches this course uh, remotely and has been doing so for the last three years. Um, the practicum course is taught by another Eastman alum. I should say Jim is also an Eastman alum. So is Blair. This is Dr. Blair Kerner. She's a bassoonist. Uh, she was Eastman's career advisor. She still advises students, uh, but now she also runs our arts leadership program. And so Blair is very well positioned for, from a number of aspects to um, help facilitate and shepherd through all of our students going through that last practicum capstone uh, course. Over on the right hand side is Judy Ricker. Judy is an oboist. She also is an alum of Eastman, and she's also a very uh, distinguished marketing professional in the Rochester area. Her career has spanned both worlds of music and performance here in Rochester. She teaches her marketing for Musical Enterprises course. The next one, Lisa French, also an Eastman alum, clarinetist, uh, and recently earned her MBA in, um, from Nashville, in Nashville, while she is still currently the CEO of the Nashville Ballet. So Lisa has had a very distinguished career uh, teaching uh, not only these courses and being involved in music education in different ways, but also helping to run orchestras in Nashville, in Portland, and now the Nashville Ballet. With her MBA background, um, and her love of finances and all things spreadsheet. She teaches our intro to financial management in the fall semester and then in the spring continues to teach the economics of musical arts organizations. Uh, the third one on the right hand side is Melissa Nahn, also an Eastman alum. Uh, she's a flutist. She started and ran Fifth House Ensemble, which is a Chicago-based um, chamber music collective. Recently, I think just earlier this year, she was named the CEO of the American Composers Orchestra. So while she still remains on the board of Fifth House Ensemble, she now is running the ACO. And she is doing a fantastic job teaching the spring semester course, generating and screening entrepreneurial ideas and music. The last one on the bottom right hand corner is Tony Paz. Tony's not an Eastman alum, but she is a clarinetist. She does have a music background and has a very distinguished career in the fundraising worlds. Um, she has worked in fundraising in Atlanta and in Jacksonville, um, helping to run both the fundraising and marketing departments and the whole idea of constituent relationships and uh, communication. So Tony is teaching our development and fundraising course, which happens in the fall semester. So as of this moment, this is the core faculty and 
who teaches the core curriculum in the MA of Music Leadership degree. If you are thinking about applying to the MA in Music Leadership, there are a few pieces in the application. Um, the prerequisite is that we want every person to have a high standard of musical skills. Often that looks like an undergraduate degree in music. There are always exceptions to that rule, um, but by and large, most all of our applicants to the MA in music leadership do have an undergraduate degree in music and can demonstrate a high level of music performance. In putting an application together, we require similar pieces that most other applications will have, just slightly different. Uh, we ask to see your resume, your transcripts, a GRE score. I know you may be thinking GRE, oh my gosh. What I can say is just do your best. No single one of these components will be the determining factor of your application. It's everything taken together, including the GRE. Do your best on the GRE. Um, with that, we ask for a personal statement. So I'm very interested in knowing what, what drives you to want to apply to the MA in Music Leadership and how do you see this as a piece of your own musical future? Um, this is an MA, a uh, Master of Arts. It's not a performance degree. So we do ask that you submit some type of academic writing. That might be a past research paper that you've done. It does not need to be something that you go out and do specific to this application. You can do that if you want, but we and I am more than happy to read something that you feel best represents the quality of work that you would bring to this academic degree of study. And then we require three recommendation letters. This can be your primary faculty member. This could be an instructor in one of your courses. This could be um, someone who has overseen an internship or a job that you have had before. But my hope is that these three recommendation letters provide different insights as to who you are as a person, as a learner, and as an applicant in the MA in Music Leadership. And the link is on here and of course is always found on the Eastman website to dig into more information about the application pieces for the MA in Music Leadership. Um, on the next slide, the audition day. So you've submitted everything. I should say that this is an online degree. So all of our auditions are online as well. Um, if you'd like to come to campus, you can connect with admissions. We can help arrange that, no problem. But all of our applications um, and interview processes are online unless otherwise requested. We have a two-part interview. Um, one is an individual interview with me where I'm really interested to ask all of the applicants about their leadership skills and capabilities and their own vision for how they see their music leadership taking place in the future. The second part of the interview is a performance audition. For this, we ask all applicants to prepare 10 minutes of music, anything of your choice. It could be a piece that really resonates with you, a piece that you've composed perhaps, a piece that you performed on a recital, Whatever speaks to you, there are no limits as to how you can fill that 10 minutes of music making, but we want to see your musical skill set. Following that, we ask for a 10 minute presentation of the work that you've just performed. As I'm certain you know, part of being a leader is having excellent communication skills. And that's what this part of the audition is meant to represent. We want to assess the presentation skills of all of the applicants coming into uh, Eastman in this degree program. And in this presentation, we want to hear you talk about music. We want to hear you tell stories of why this piece is meaningful to you, why you selected this piece. Maybe it has to do with the theory or the history behind it, 
or maybe it has to do with the performance that you have created for this experience or maybe that you performed in the past. You can take this in any direction that you want. And we have some examples that we will be able to share after this is December 1 deadline. Um, I'll work with admissions and we will send those out to you. Just in a, as an example, no way or no need that you need to mimic that in any way. It's just to spur your own thinking as to directions that you might be able to go. And then we typically have a group meeting with the music leadership students. Even if you have your audition day online, I still put together some coffee chats over Zoom for you to get to know the current students in the program and be able to ask them questions about their experience um, and what it's like being a student in this online degree program. So the audition day is not just a chance for us to ask you questions, but it's a chance for you to ask us questions and get to know the program more. And if you have questions, further questions about the faculty or the classes or, you know, any piece of the application, feel free to ask us at any time. I've even had students ask to sit in on one of our synchronous class meetings I'm more than happy to do that at any time. It gives students and applicants a bit more insight as to what the level of discourse is and what that interaction is among students. So if you have questions, whether it's during the audition process on that audition day or during, during the application period, please don't hesitate to be in touch with us at any time. The next piece that I'd like to touch on has to do with the online degree experience. I should say that our consideration of moving this degree online actually began pre-COVID. COVID kind of helped spur it along a little faster than what was anticipated for reasons that all of you I'm certain know. But I was hearing from a lot of potential applicants questioning whether or not they could get this type of information uh, while they were still working. They didn't want to pick up and leave their jobs or leave their families. So that's where the impetus to move this degree online initially came from. The courses still have the same type of rigor and intensity and quality to them as they did when they were hosted online. Um, the course meetings are not three-hour seminars like they were um, when we were in person, but instead we designed those course meetings to be around students' own schedule and flexibility. Often that ends up being in the evening hours, especially for those that are studying overseas or on the West Coast. You know, we make it at a time that's available for everyone who has registered in the class. Um, it's a mix of both synchronous and asynchronous course ma um, material. So throughout a course, you'll have a series of, of modules. And within those modules, you'll meet one or two times synchronously as a class real time together, and then navigate through asynchronous course material, whether that's discussion boards or projects with your group, working through case studies and creating simulated videos of how you would navigate that case discussion. There's all different types of ways that we interact together online throughout the week. So even though we don't physically see each other face to face, we are in constant communication together throughout the synchronous and asynchronous course experience. When you think about those five credits of electives to fill, there is a limited selection available for remote learners. Um, secondary lessons are available as well for online learners. So if you want to continue pursuing your own musical development, we do make that available with our secondary lesson placement here at Eastman. For those that choose to still move here and be in the Rochester area, be on the Eastman campus, 
those individuals can have the opportunity to select from any Eastman course to fulfill their electives. It's just the remote learners that have a selected base of uh, limited courses for their remote study. But again, similar to the capstone project and experience, this is something that I work with every single student on to figure out what the right um, opportunities are for that remote study and fulfilling those five elective credits. For those that are in New York State, the MA in Music Leadership can be used to obtain your professional certification for teaching in New York State. This is a huge, I think, a huge bonus um, to all the educators out there who are looking to continue their own development and how they can be leaders in the education world. Um, so there is, this was officially passed and is on file when you go to go search the New York State Department of Education. The MA in Music Leadership is one of the officially approved programs that you could use to obtain and maintain your professional certification. The MA in Music Leadership also has a pathway to be combined with an MBA. Part of another part of the University of Rochester is the Simon School of Business, and this is who we have collaborated with. A student would typically spend 14 months here at Eastman full time for the MA in Music Leadership. When pursuing this combined degree, it would instead be 12 months at Eastman, a summer, fall, and spring. And then you would save that capstone for the very end. So you do a summer, fall, and spring here at Eastman, a summer, fall, and spring at Simon, and then come back and do that third um, summer, the capstone here at Eastman. So the coursework in total is 26 months with both the MA and the MBA core. Uh, the MBA application contents are uh, similar, a little bit different. There is some overlap, um, but you are eligible to submit either the GMAT or GRE scores. You have a couple essays, not just one personal statement, but a couple essays as part of this MBA application. Again, submitting your transcript and references. You only are required two for this application, it's three for the Eastman application. It's important to note that being accepted to this program is a separate admissions and application cycle than being um, accepted and admitted to the MA in Music Leadership. So if this is something you're interested in, you'll need to submit an application for both programs. Um, the Simon MBA, admission cycle has multiple different uh, timelines by which you can submit. We recommend that if you are looking to do this, um, you submit by December 1. So they also have a similar, they have rolling ambitions, but if you submit by December 1, that will give you hopefully the information that you need along the same time uh, and time frame to make your decision as to when you will be receiving the information from Eastman's MA in Music Leadership as well. So again, you can find more information about that online um, application through Simon at this link below. For those Eastman students who are pursuing or wanting to pursue either a DMA or a PhD, we also have the opportunity for a minor in music leadership. This would take two to three semesters to complete. And I should say that most DMA students do have a minor. Um, what this entails is putting together an individualized course plan with me, 10 to 12 credits of music leadership coursework. You would have some individual advising throughout that time and then once everything is complete, go through a final review meeting with myself and maybe a couple other advisors that you've worked with just to talk about how the capstone learning ties into your primary course of study. 
The application is pretty simple, two very brief essays, transcripts, and an interview with me. And this is something that you would do upon acceptance and getting admitted to Eastman. Typically students do this in at the beginning of their second year, they apply for any type of minor. So at this point, that's all the information that I have for the MA in Music Leadership. And I'd like to transition just a, a touch, zoom out and go more into the Institute for Music Leadership. Separate from any degree or any program, the Institute for Music Leadership is available to all students at Eastman, regardless of your degree or major or course of study. The center was created in 1996 to share and support and implement innovative ideas and programs to ensure the relevance and impact of music in today's world. The IML, as we call it for short, hosts a whole number of pathways to engage with your own musical leadership development. This could be through courses, workshops, we have special events, we have certificate programs. I'll dig into the ALP in a minute, but the ECLC, the Eastman Career and Leadership Certificate, is a program that you could take online right now if you were interested in diving into your own uh, continued leadership uh, development. We have a number of grant programs and have funds available to support students and their projects not just in awarding grant funds, but in also providing mentorship and guidance as students progress along through their grant project. The IML office also houses our career advising office. And we work with students on everything from resumes and cover letters to uh, career advice, to um, interview preparation. If you need a place to begin, the IML, especially the Career Advising Office, is a great place and a great resource to um, utilize. And then we have a number of other conferences and learning opportunities. Um, we have the Eastman Leadership Academy, soon to be launched this summer, the Eastman Leadership Boot Camp, and the Eastman Leadership Conference. These happen in June and are different ways to dive into your own leadership development. The academy is for college students and young professionals. The boot camp is for those five to seven years out who are interested in, in uh, some more case study development of leadership issues, what's current right now. And the Eastman Leadership Conference is for those mid-career professionals looking to advance in their careers. But the IML is a great resource throughout the school. We are partnering quite a bit with the faculty. And so integrating these types of programs within what already exists in classes and in the requirements of students who are um, pursuing their degree and their time is limited. So we are trying to do our best to integrate these different types of skills and uh, knowledge um, for students in throughout their degree here at Eastman. And drilling down just a little bit, I said I would come back to this. The Arts Leadership Program. This is actually where IML began, was through this Arts Leadership Program. It's where uh, it initially began in the recognition that success as a professional musician also requires the ability to communicate effectively, um, to have those entrepreneurial thinking skills, to have fluency with emerging technologies, and a commitment to audience engagement and public advocacy for music and the arts. So the Arts Leadership Program um, wants to help students inspire them to develop a personal vision. Um, it wants to equip students with professional skills and experiences. And it encourages students to provide leadership in the musical culture and marketplace spaces. To pursue the arts leadership program, you need to first be admitted to Eastman and then apply to this in typically your first semester. If you are an undergrad, you'll wait until your third year 
but if you are a graduate student, you will typically apply in your first semester because it takes three to four semesters to complete all the necessary pieces uh, to earn the certificate in this program. What's required is a number of arts leadership courses. You'll have regular career advising. You will embark on a couple paid for credit local internships. And we also have funding available for summer externships. So going out into the country, into the world and exploring your own interest in music. And then of course, we have an ever continuously growing base of arts leadership program alumni, um, which we have almost 500 to date, but we have a variety of networking events as well. And the network of alums, both at Eastman, but specifically with the arts leadership program is wide and diverse. And it's so fun to see the connections that can be made just through this one thread of having all participated through the ALP program. I'd say the main areas of focus both with ALP and through the IML is really thinking about entrepreneurial careers. What is that mindset and how do you approach the work that you will be doing now and into the future? Um, we focus on leadership and administration. We focus on performance. And we also focus on the healthy musician. So health and wellness. How do you take care of yourself now and long into the future with your body as your instrument? So that's just a quick overview of the Institute for Music Leadership and the Arts Leadership Program. Um, I'm not certain if any questions have come in or Matthew, if there's something that I've missed that you wanna cover, feel free to chime in but I would welcome any questions that you have. Well, no questions yet, but don't be shy. Go ahead and submit your questions uh, if you have them. Um, boy, you covered a lot there, <laughs> Rachel. Sorry. I was I was looking at, you know, when you were talking about the faculty and a number of them are Eastman alums, um, I think it would be great to hear a bit about what some of the alumni of the MA Oh, in sure. music leadership program are doing? Yeah, I can talk about this now. The first time I you, you and I did this, it was <laughs> brand new. But I'm so happy to share what some of the alums are doing right now. Um, I have, well, one just received a job offer this last week with the Buffalo Philharmonic. He will be working in the fundraising and patron services department. Another uh, who graduated last year, just um, a month ago received a job offer with the Detroit Symphony, and she also is working in the fundraising department. Um, I had one student who started, well, left Eastman, graduated, and began his career with SF Jazz. So he worked in the fundraising department with the San Francisco Jazz, and then transition to doing contract work in music and licensing um, with Apple Music. So he's still based in the Bay Area in San Francisco uh, doing contract work for Apple Music, which is pretty spectacular. Uh, there's another student who has uh, decided she wasn't done with Eastman, so she came back and got an MM in conducting, and then she stuck around and she's still here for her third degree, a DMA in contemporary conducting. Um, so it's a pleasure to still see her in the hallways and see her on and off the stage. Um, oh my gosh, who else? All right, another student has recently uh, moved to Chicago. She got a job working with Fifth House Ensemble. So the organization that Melissa Nahn started I was able to work with Melissa and create a capstone experience for this student. Now, it's never my expectation, nor should it be any students, that a capstone experience will lead to a job. But it's a happy coincidence when it does happen. And it happened for this student with Melissa's transition. There is a promotion internally um, to the next executive director for Fifth House, which created the vacancy that this student filled. Um, so that was really fun to see that come to fruition, not only as a pathway out of the MA in music leadership, 
but also with multiple ALP and Eastman alums um, in that organization. So I could tell a lot of stories about where these students are, but suffice to say, all of them have found pathways that are meaningful to their own interests. You know, um, there's a couple that I haven't mentioned who are really interested in community music school organizations. One is working and helping to run a community music school in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And another one has plans to start something in the Syracuse area while at the same time, he's working with the Syracuse Youth Symphony as well as working with the um, Syracuse New Music Society as a grant writer. So all of these individuals have found pathways uh, to pursue their own interests and combine music on and off the stage with the leadership skills that are provided and taught in the MA for Music Leadership. That's great. I remember last spring we were doing this and you were speaking of the uh, soon-to-be graduate who had been offered her job by a company that you couldn't get name, um, but that it was a pretty big deal. I think that was uh, the Apple was, person. Yeah, yeah. It was. I can now <laughs> say it now. So, yeah. That's great. So uh, Elias has a couple of questions about uh, combining degrees, which is a great question because there's... Right. Uh, it's certainly something that happens here. Mm -hmm. um, so first, with regard to the MBA MA program, um, is, is there any part of the MBA program that's also available remotely? At this time, no. But I will say it's an, I've heard that it's an active discussion at Simon. Um, so stay tuned. But at this particular moment, no. <laughs> yeah, and that's um, that kind of ties into the... Uh, Another question about um, how that would apply to somebody doing an MM at Eastman and the MA in, in leadership, uh, would any part of the MM be available remotely? And it's a similar answer, really. You know, it's right now, all of our graduate programs, with the exception of the MA in music leadership, have returned to fully in person. Um, you know, with lots of little exceptions in various circumstances, uh, which is what will make certain courses available online in certain semesters. But that's really a semester by semester sort of thing. But similar to the the Simon MBA program, this is a this is a conversation that's ongoing at Eastman. So the answer could evolve and could change as we're you know still absorbing what what experiences through teaching online when we had to teach online. Uh, will we want to carry forward uh, with real intention? You know, so for example, a, a music history professor who has found that uh, his students really would prefer to have an asynchronous online option for one of the courses that he's teaching agreed to do that this semester. Uh, and so those students are able to, and they're here, you know, these are all in-person uh, students are able to fit that one course in around their schedule without having to you know, show up at a, at a particular time. Will there be more of that? Will it expand? That's, that's a question right now we don't actually really know the answer to, but it's something to certainly stay tuned for. One thing to add into the MM and MA, if you're pursuing that together, is that the requirements for one can serve as the electives for the other. So oh. if you are pursuing both degrees, the electives that you have, let's say for the MM performance degree, you could fill those with the required courses needed for the MA in music leadership and vice versa. So if you were doing an MM and an M uh, MA in music leadership, that'd probably take you three years to complete with a couple summers, but it's that would be the one component of the MM that might be able to be online because the MA and music leadership courses are online. Right. And then um, following on that, uh, do we have any options for the MA plus PhD combined degrees? And I think it depends, you know, so if you're asking about this particular program, uh, the music leadership degree, um, 
it doesn't feed into a PhD program in, in the way that you might be thinking of. I and mean, we do have musicology and theory PhD program, composition PhD programs where a student can start the track out of a bachelor's degree program, pick up the master's degree along the way, and then go on and continue uh, the PhD program, having applied to the PhD program coming out of their undergraduate uh, program. But for music leadership, um, that's not a that's not a you know in passing uh, on the way sort of thing. But it doesn't mean that you couldn't simultaneously pursue yeah. a PhD in another area. And the four areas where we have PhD programs are composition, musicology, music theory, and music education. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to add to that, Rachel? No, you covered that one. All right, so then uh, we have Ryan who has a question about uh, applying for the MA in music leadership and a master's degree in, in performance and literature. Um, would he apply to the summer? for the MA and the fall for the MM, would have to open up two separate applications. Um, yeah, so, okay, so the reason it's not letting you open up two separate applications is that you don't have to. So um, hopefully that's good news. <laughs> what the application should allow you to do is to select both. And so, um, I'm, I should have it open in front of me, but you know, if I'm, if I'm remembering the order of the questions, you know, you can, you can, you'll start by entering one of those degree programs, let's say the MA in music leadership, and it will ask you if you want to apply for a second. Uh, and so you, you choose the second program there. Um, you know, from that point, the application is going to default to being a summer or a fall term, depending on what you selected first, but it doesn't matter. We, you know, we know um, how to parse that. And we know that if you're admitted to the, to both programs, you will start the MA program in the summer and continue uh, taking coursework in the MM, adding coursework from the MM in the fall. Um, so don't create a second account. Certainly don't create a second account with a second email that will confuse us even more. Um, so just, uh, just go back in there, take another look. You should be able to add it. And if you run into any issues, just contact the admissions office and we'll, we'll walk you through it. And Ryan's following up to say, the MM only shows up under the fall 2022 and the MA shows up under summer. Yeah, so that that is correct. And that should be, should be how they're listed, um, but you still should be able to select both programs. So um, I'm gonna take that as a follow-up, Ryan, and send you an email right after this and see if we can troubleshoot that. Because uh, that that should be working for you. Okay. And then, um, yeah, this question about could someone studying part time remotely be able to come study in Rochester for the summers? Absolutely. If you wanted to come to Rochester for the summer for the academic year, this is an online degree. You can study wherever you would like. If that's in Rochester, if that's in Alaska, if that's in, you know, Australia, wherever you would like to be located is totally fine. And of course, if you come to Rochester, let me know. I'd love to meet you in person. Excellent. And actually, uh, you know, to to close out, Ryan, this is a, this is um, someone who's even better poised <laughs> to help you with this question. Um, we're putting up contact information here, both for Professor Roberts and for our Associate Director of Admissions, Christina Crispin, who is also, um, well, she's a couple of different, well, she's more than two different things, but in this context, she's the lead admissions person for this particular program. So she works very closely with Professor Roberts on uh, the applications that come in and with the applicants to that program. She is also the tech, technology lead for the application. Um, so she will probably be able to give you an even quicker answer on what might be happening with the, you know, the choosing two programs issue um, in the application. So her contact information is there, um, as well as Professor Roberts. 
And uh, I, I, again, you know, part of this is to provide a whole lot of information all at once and, and leave you with that. But we always want to emphasize that we are here uh, and, and available to answer questions. And uh, so make sure you take advantage of that. Email or phone is, is fine and never hesitate to, uh, to reach out. This is what we do, making sure you understand how everything works, if this is the right fit for you, if this is uh, you know, the right program, why isn't the application working the way it should? Whatever those questions are, um, we're happy to, to answer them for you. So with that, I think I think we're we're good. I want to thank everybody for uh, for your attention and for your time tonight and the thoughtful questions. Uh, I want to thank Professor Roberts for delivering a lot of great information um, about these programs and for spending some time with us tonight. Sure, and thank you, Matthew, and thanks everybody for tuning in tonight. Like Matthew said, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us at any time. We're more than happy to help. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.